Assalamualaikum and good day. So we'll um, continue our lecture on the DC to DC boost converter. Right, so for the introduction, so um, again, so I'll repeat it one more time. So uh, for a boost converter, the output voltage will be always higher than the input voltage because of the boosting property that being introduced by the boost converter. So in order to ease our analysis in steady state, form so we have a few assumptions which is number one is that we need to ensure that the inductor current is always continuous which is always has a positive value okay and then for the second uh, assumption that we assume that the value of the capacity is very large so for the very large impedance the amount of current that been flowing through that particular uh, path will be very small so we can simply conclude that the uh, capacity current that been flowing to the current uh, path will be um, close to zero as a, a small value so we can simply ignore the capacitor path uh, in our steady state analysis and then we assume all components are ideal right so all components are ideal which is your input power will be equals to your output power so the switching time t um, is for the whole switching time where the switch will be on for the period of dt and will it will be off at the period of 1 minus t times t right okay and then um, so for the introduction there are two ways to implement the boost converter one is that by using two switches which operate in complementary manners and the second one is by using the uh, active switches. We can use the thyristor, IGBT, MOSFET, and others uh, in a, a combination with a freewheeling diode. All right. So you can see here, this is our input voltage, and this input voltage Vs will be connected directly to your capacitor for boost converter. So we can simply say that the input volt, input current I in will be equals to your inductor current based on this connection of input voltage and your inductor. Okay, and then we have our switch here. Uh, where the um, switch current and diode current and then for this capacity path the value of the capacity we assume to be very large which is the amount of current I see that been flowing to this path will be small and it can we can simply ignore in order to ease our steady state analysis right so following the uh, uh, boost converter operation so we will do the equivalent circuit in order to find the relationship between the duty cycle the output voltage and the input voltage so for the first equivalent circuit uh, this is the first equivalent circuit one switch is on so it being replaced by a short circuit when diode is off or reverse wise it will be replaced by an open circuit for the circuit second equivalent circuit um where the switch is open so here so open there is no connection and your diode is closed or uh, fault bias we put it as closed uh, or short eh? right okay and then from these two equivalent circuit we will do the analysis in order to find the uh, required equation so okay this is the uh, analysis when switch is on and diode is reverse biased so this is the equivalent circuit so since your um, diode is off of reverse bias so this load side here will be disconnected from the input so the equivalent circuit will left like this which is we have the input voltage and inductor and this is a switcher that being um, a short circuit okay again we will start the analysis with voltage across the inductor so vl will be equals to vs minus v naught okay will be equals to ldi over dt so we rearrange the equation becomes delta il when switch is on will be equals to vs over l multiplied by dt dt is delta t here which is the period when your switch is on okay and then for the second equivalent circuit okay this is uh, the equivalent circuit when switch is off okay replaced by open circuit and when switch is a uh, diode is forward bias will replaced by short circuit so from this and then we also ignore the capacitor current path here so it become the equivalent circuit become the this simplified equivalent circuit we have vs 
uh, voltage across inductor and also our V0 voltage across your resistor. So your VL will be equals to V, V V L will be equals to V S minus V naught will be equals to L D I over D T. <coughs> um, sorry, I have a sore throat. Um, so delta I M when switch is off will be equals to V S minus V naught over L multiplied by one minus T times T. Right. So from once we get these two equation, so we just equate it together equals to zero. And then uh, we look for the similar terms and try to simplify the equation further until we reach this final equation here, which is your duty cycle D will be equals to V0 minus Vs over V0. Right. Okay. Once we get the duty cycle equation, so now we can find the rest of the uh, equation. So we need to find the average current IL. Average inductor current IL. Okay, from there, remember what uh, I just said just now the input current IS will be equals to the inductor current. Why is that? Because your input voltage is being connected directly to your inductor. So that is why the same current that been flowing to the input uh, as well as to the inductor. Okay, the input uh, power will be equals to P0. Uh, P0 will be equals to V0 squared over R okay, or V0 multiplied by I0 okay, and then your input power will be equals to Vs multiplied by Vs multiplied by I input current which is uh, we replace I in with IL and then we uh, substitute it we equate it together substitute and then to find the equation with regards to inductor current so basically this one yeah so your input power, your uh, input power, output power, and then uh, we equate together. So we'll be able to get your um, average inductor current, IL, will be equals to Vs over R multiplied by 1 minus T times T. Okay, once we get this average inductor current, we'll be able to find the uh, IL max, IL min, and also the value of a minimum inductor. So, um, <coughs> so this is the waveform uh, that you will get whenever you do the analysis uh, for the voltage and current waveform. The first one is inductor current. The second one is inductor voltage, voltage across your inductor. Then we have your diode current. Remember the shape is um, a trapezium shape, eh? right? Uh, and then we have the capacitor current. So in this case, the capacitor current uh, for the steady state analysis will be ignored. However, in practical, you can still observe the waveform of the inductor current. Alright, and then we have this um, uh, derivation in order to find the value for your capacitor C. So for boost commuter, your C will be equals to D over R multiplied by output voltage ripple, percentage of uh, output voltage ripple multiplied by F here is your switching frequency. Okay, so this one here, is your switching frequency, eh? F. Right, so in this example over here, we need to design a boost converter that delivered um, 18 volt, which is the upper voltage is 18. 80 so v out is 80 and then um, i out because at 4 ampere so this is your i out from a 45 this is your bs 45 volt of source voltage the output voltage ripple um, this one here which is the uh, delta v naught over v naught is one percent and the switching frequency is 20 Kilohertz. So you need, you also need to design for the continuous inductor current. So for this um, design question, basically we want to find three main items which is L, value of inductor, value of capacitor and R. 
and also uh, when the question comes uh, mention that you need to design for continuous current so you need to find your IL okay your IL max and IL mean to prove that it is a continuous current at your output which is all these three value will have a positive value okay this is the solution for example one Okay, first and foremost, we need to find your duty cycle here. Um, <coughs> and then, you need to find the uh, duty cycle will be equals to 0 0.4375. Then, you need to find your R. R will be equals to 20 ohm. Okay, next step, you need to find the uh, IL, average inductor current. Just substitute the value, you will get 7.11 ampere. And then, we need to find the, uh, the minimum value of inductor. Okay, use the uh, L min equation, which is you will get 0. Point, eh, sorry, uh, uh, 69.21 microhenry. Okay, and then uh, multiply by 1.25 because we want to ensure that your D, um, L will always provide a continue, uh, will always make your converter to be operated in CCM. So your L will be equals to uh, 86.52 microhenry. Okay, and then finally, the value for your capacitor. So, for the capacitor, you will get 109.375 microfarad. Okay, so that is basically um, all the calculation that involved in designing for the DC to DC converter, which is we need to find the passive um, component, the value for the passive component. Okay, now in order to uh, answer for the continuous current, so basically we need to find the uh, average current. Just now we did find in the previous slide, and then we need to find the IL max and IL min to prove that these two values will have a positive value. So the minimum inductor current that we get from the calculation will be 12.8 ampere for the minimum current is 1.2 uh, 1.42 ampere. Right. <coughs> Okay, now we go for the example number two. For in this example over here, we have an input. Okay, so our Vs will be 5 volt. And then we have um, our output, which is output power in this case is P0, eh, P out, and at 15 volt. So your V0 will be equals to 15 volt. And then uh, the statement inside this um, example to mention that your minimum current that the current mass no less than 50%. So your uh, IL mean must be no less. Maksudnya, the, um, lebih, daripada, lebih atau sama lah. Tak boleh kurang daripada 50%. So 50% of you punya IL. And then the output voltage ripple that being given is 1%, which is in this case is delta V0 over V0. Right, so we uh, switching frequency is 50 kilohertz. So we need to find the value of L and C. Okay, so how to find this value L and C? Okay, so first, uh, in any of the question, first you need to find what is the duty cycle. And if let's say that it's been given, then that is fine. If not, you need to uh, try to find the duty cycle first. So your duty cycle for this boost computer will be 1 minus Vs over V0. So you get 0 0.67. The value of R. Um, uh, so since in the question, it gives you the output power and also the output voltage. So you'll be able to use that information to find the value of your R. In this case, it's 9 ohm. <coughs> And then in the uh, condition that being given in the question, which is the minimum inductor current is no less than 50% of the average inductor current. So we need to, first we need to find what is our average and 50% 50 50 from that average inductor current will be your IL min. So once you find your inductor current, so just substitute inside this uh, formula. So you will get 5.1 ampere. Okay, and then this uh, minimum inductor current IL mean will be equal to half, eh? at least half. So half multiplied by 5.1, so you get 2.55 ampere. Right, and then how about the minimum inductor current? Just uh, from plus, you just change to minus. Eh? 
right? So you will get your minimum inductor current. Uh, you already know the minimum inductor current is uh, 2.55 ampere. So now we need to find the value for the inductor. So we need to use the minimum current equation. So this is the minimum current equation and we need to substitute all the known parameter. So we have L, the one that unknown that we need to find. So just rearrange back this equation, bring to the, the next side or just maintain to the side. So until you get the value for the L, able to solve the value for the inductor, which is L in this case is 13.14 micro Henry. Okay, so how about capacitor? Capacitor is a very straightforward um, equation. Eh? So you, you we can find a straightforward equation to find the value for the capacity in boost converter. So C will be equals to, just substitute all the values, you will get 148.89 microfarad. Right. Okay, this is the boost converter in DCM, discontinuous conduction mode. Right, so for the discontinuous conduction mode, we assume inductor voltage is zero. So VL uh, average will be equals to zero. And we assume that the um, average current in the diode ID will be equals to the load current. Okay, why is that we have the such uh, assumption? Later we will see in the equation uh, in the waveform later on. Eh? Right, so this is the... Um, condition right so the operation uh, in DCM it will be similar to CCM the only difference is that it will add one more um, operating condition where both switch and dial are off in order to indicate a discontinuous voltage and current in the output right so the um, when switch is on the average uh, voltage across the inductor is Vs, so similar in CCM. Okay, when switch is off, the inductor voltage is positive and the inductor voltage is Vs minus V0. So it was also same as the one in CCM. Um, the, the, the only uh, difference is that um, perhaps the uh, value for the uh, current in CCM will be higher than the uh, in this DCM right okay so the inductor um, current will decrease at a reach to zero and um, it will be prevented from going to ne the negative by the diode so diode will have a uh, function eh? if let's say that you calculate your um, what we call your current that the current to be uh, less than zero which is <coughs> you get a negative value Okay, in calculation, no problem, but in reality, in the practical, uh, the current will not go to zero. We go not go after zero, will not go to the negative region because of the, uh, we have in the circuit, the freewheeling diode. So this freewheeling diode will provide alternative way for the current to be flowing. Okay, so, okay, that's, okay, this is the waveform of the boost converter in DCM so this is the inductor current you can see here the um, it start at zero so your IL mean will be equals to zero here so your delta IL we know your delta IL is IL max minus IL mean right so since IL min is equals to zero, so your uh, delta IL will be equals to maximum inductor current. So you notice that the shape as well, the shape of this will be a triangle, right? Okay, and then the voltage across inductor will be equal, uh, a square, okay? And then the um, inductor current. So the inductor current, uh, oh, sorry, the diode current here, so this diode current happen whenever your diode is turned on. So in this case, we'll be at the negative region. So uh, your diode will have an output whenever uh, your um, the, uh, whenever um, the the diode being um, whenever <coughs> uh, the diode is uh, forward bias. Okay. 
So this is the um, equivalent circuit in DCM for the first one. So which is you get the same as the one in CCM and same goes with the second one. The only difference is delta T. Now, so the delta T is the one T for this um, second equivalent circuit. Meanwhile, for uh, the first equivalent circuit, delta T will be equals to D. Alright, so following that, so rearrange the equation. Okay, so you will get your average uh, diode current. ID will be equals to half IL max multiplied by D1. So, ID will be equals to half IL max multiplied by D1. Right. So, now, um, our aim is that we want to find what is the uh, inside this D1 here. So, in order to find what is inside D1, so you can always refer back to the um, what we call our um, waveform just now. So, your IL max, okay, will be equals to um, delta IL. Why is that? Because your IL mean equals to zero. So, the uh, delta IL, you have two possibility. Either you take the delta IL equation when switch is on, ataupun you take delta IL equation when your switch is off. Either way, you can get the same results. Right. So once you have this, okay, you substitute inside this. We know that your uh, the current ID will equal to half IL max. So you substitute um, this one here. Okay, inside this here. Right. So your ID will be equal to <coughs> half VSDT over L multiplied by D1, which is V equals to V naught over R. So you can solve it. Uh, to find the value for your DT cycle in DCM. Okay, now, okay, if let's say that you want to find the upper voltage, this is the equation. And if let's say that um, it, it gives you, um, and, and then you'll be able to solve this equation here in order to find uh, to find the new upper voltage in DCM. So if you note, uh, notice from here, your upper voltage here will be equal to, if let's say you bring Vs here, so it will be here, right? So here will be cancelled out. So just bring it here. So Vs over 2 bracket 1 plus uh, square root <coughs> 1 plus 2d squared rt over l. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Okay. So, <coughs> so you can see that for boost converter, the output voltage will depend on the value of <coughs> value of L, the value of R, and also the switching frequency. <coughs> I think that's all for the boost computer. Okay, oh. <coughs> we have one more. Sorry, we have one more uh, example. So in this example, it's basically <coughs> the boost converter in the DCM. So the, um, this is the solution <coughs> to verify the boost converter in DCM or not. Uh, so we can use the IL mean equation if let's say that it, uh, we can prove that um, IL mean equals to zero or to negative. So it can show that this is a discontinuous current. <coughs> <coughs> and then for the output voltage uh, for the boost converter in DCM just substitute um, inside the equation the, the previous equation you will get 53.59 volt and as well as for the maximum inductor current the equation also being given you can use the delta IL equation you have two options choose either way as long as uh, you'll be able to solve uh, the equation and finding the value in this case I use the first one because it's much simpler and it only have uh, uh, four unknown parameters so you get a uh, you uh, we will get the maximum of uh, inductor current will be equals to 6 ampere all right I think okay so we come up with the conclusion for this boost converter so a boost converter can uh, step up the output voltage without uh, having to use a transformer 
Alright, so uh, since uh, all of this DC to DC counter it use only a single transistor or switch, it will have very high efficiency. The input current is continuous um, and it's always continuous. Yeah? So because we want to make sure that the converter is being operated in CCM. Okay, so the output voltage is very sensitive to the changes in the T cycle. Um, you, we can see that uh, in, in the uh, duty cycle equation uh, where we have the uh, output voltage and also the input voltage so any changes will affect the output voltage <coughs> alright okay and then the average output current is less than the average inductor current so average output current is I0 is less than the average um, inductor current by a factor of 1 minus d Alright, uh, and then uh, a much higher RMS current uh, will flow through the filter capacitor and this will result a larger filter capacitor and a larger inductor than those in the bulk converter. If let's say that you uh, use the similar parameter, you calculate the, uh, which is you have the uh, similar um, duty cycle you can find that the value the value of inductor and capacitor for boost converter is a bit higher than for the bulk converter right so that is the conclusion for this um, boost converter so until uh, so i think i will stop until here and i will um, continue with the bulk boost converter later on so thank you everyone